Now it's time for us to hit the hospitals to show you what goes on. Today, we're in the operating theatre. Ah! Can you see my tonsils? Ah! Of course you can't. They were taken out when I was six. But what are these so-called tonsils? What do they do? Why were mine removed? I'm on duty with the tonsil team to find out. Your tonsils sit at the back of your throat. But what are they doing there? Meet Dr Anan Kazbekar. He specialises in the ears, nose and throat. We don't 100% know exactly what the tonsils do. What? But we have a fairly good idea. They fight bugs. Essentially, they're your body's line of defence. Why do they get infected themselves? Sometimes it's just too much for them to fight. And the tonsils themselves enlarge, they get inflamed, which causes pain. And it's when your tonsils become so inflamed and painful that you might need to have them taken out. But don't worry, your body can cope perfectly well without them. There are plenty of other glands and other bits of your body, like your tonsils, that fight infection. So if you've lost your tonsils, don't worry. Well, that's a relief. Now I'm going to see some tonsils removed. So let's see who's on the ward to have theirs out today. This is Bailey. How big do you think your tonsils are going to be? I think they're going to be about that big. Whoa, you think they're going to be pretty big? Show me them. Ah. Ignore the dangly bit in the middle. These are the tonsils. Bailey's tonsils are absolutely massive. They're lumpy, they're big. They really look like they need to come out. What do you think? Also on the surgical ward today is Amber. Can you give me an ah? Oh, look, there they are. Have you done this in the mirror? So, Bailey and Amber about to have their tonsils out. But I wonder who's are going to be bigger? Let's go find out. This is the operating theatre. So this is very exciting for me. We've been allowed to come in and watch this surgery, which is amazing, but it's particularly amazing because it's an operation that I had and I've never seen it. First up to get her tonsils out is Amber. She's fast asleep and the team are ready for action. What Arnon's doing is he's taken the tonsil and lifted it out of a sort of pocket of muscle that it sits in, so it's almost on a stalk. And then he's using the electrified tweezers to gently pull the tonsil away from its surrounding tissue. And it's almost like when you peel a piece of chicken skin off a chicken breast, you can kind of find the right direction to go through and lift it out. So that is the right tonsil coming out now. So this is the second tonsil coming out. There it is. So Amber's tonsils are about as big as grapes, but will Bailey's be any bigger? On to tonsil takeout number two. And this time we've got surgeon Sue Day in the hot seat, and she prefers to use a different technique. So Sue's grabbed Bailey's tonsil, and then she's using this very clever probe to basically burn away the tissue so that she can remove it. And there we go, number one. And hot on its heels is number two. And as predicted, they look rather large. How did those tonsils from Bailey compare to the ones we saw from Amber? I think uh, Amber's tonsils look sort of fairly infected and, uh, and, and... Almost crumbly. And, yeah, crumbly and a bit shriveled. And that can happen with lots of attacks of tonsillitis. But Bailey's are certainly bigger. So look in there. No more massive tonsils, which means, like Amber, Bailey will be infection and pain-free from now on. So that's it. Two tonsils out. It's a really straightforward operation. It's all done in less than half an hour. Absolutely amazing. Ouch. Into a darkened room steps a man, but this is no ordinary man. So what makes him so special? Is it the red hair? No, Chris. Is it the shades? No, Chris. Hmm, is it the sword? Well, almost. In fact, this man is hiding an amazing body. Yes, meet the mighty Gareth, and he has mastered the art of swallowing a sword. Sword swallowing is a skill that takes years of practice and training. So don't ever try this at home, because it would actually kill you. When Gareth swallows his sword, it goes down his throat all the way into his stomach, narrowly missing his heart and lung. In fact, if he made even one mistake, he'd be dead. And there's even more to this skill than precision. To do this amazing trick, 
Gareth has to make his body fight its natural desire to reject the sword. A gag reflex at the back of the throat there, that makes you just want to be sick. Yes, I feel that just watching. And it's taken Gareth years to learn how to manoeuvre the sword past the vital organs in his body safely. The hardest bit is relaxing while doing something which is totally unrelaxing. You can say that again. I'm not sure he can with that sword in his mouth. And in case you thought it was all a big trick, it isn't. Now that's amazing. Ouch. Ready to see one of our all-time favourite experiments? Yes! We're going to show you how your incredible body works. Just don't try anything you see here at home. <coughs> now today, we're going to be looking at what happens <coughs> when you cough. Now, a cough is a reflex action that your body does to get rid of something harmful or irritating which you've breathed in by mistake, like icing sugar, for example. Icing sugar? Why would I breathe in icing sugar? We're in a lab, not a kitchen. And when I do bake, I always make savoury things like, you know, the cheese twists with... <coughs> Water! <coughs> now we're going to show you Chris coughing like you've never seen it before. Now this is a video of the inside of my head. This was taken using a magnetic resonance imaging machine, or MRI. Now, the main difference between a cough and simply breathing out hard is my favourite body part, your epiglottis. Its normal job is to stop food going into your lungs when you swallow, but in a cough, it closes off the lungs and allows pressure to build up in the lungs. Sand, do the first part of a cough. Now, Sand's closed his epiglottis, the pressure's rising in his chest, so when he opens it, <coughs> the air rushes out at 60 miles an hour. But if a cough's that powerful, where does it go? And what's in it? Well, we're going to show you. It's time for competitive <coughs> coughing. What is going on? Well, I've made these cutouts that look just like you and me. They don't look anything like me. They're all blue. I'm the green twit. Everything I wear is green. It's greenish. It's... it's not, does that look the same? It's turquoise! It doesn't look anything alike! It's not relevant, aren't. The point is, I've put plates full of a special scientific gunk called agar jelly on the faces of our cutouts. So if any bacteria happen to land on any of our plates, they're going to multiply so much we can actually see them. OK, Chris, you ready? Three, two, one, cough! We're doing two experiments, one where the plates are 10 centimetres away and another where they're 50 centimetres away. <coughs> well, all done. Not quite, Chris. I want you to take this agar plate and hold it in front of your face, and I'm going to cough on it. And this time, I'm going to cover my mouth with my elbow the way you're supposed to, and hopefully no germs should land on the plate. OK, we'll just make sure you do it properly. <coughs> <coughs> and now we have to wait. In lab conditions, bacteria take some time to grow. Luckily, we came prepared for a long wait. And finally, the test results are in. So let's check out the cutouts that were 50 centimetres away first. Oh, yuck! This has worked really well. All these bacteria have grown into thick, furry, yucky blooms. Ugh. Well, let's have a look at mine. Ugh! They're even worse than Zant's. Mine are also growing in horrible, slimy, furry green colonies. And all this from just one cough. Now for the cutouts that were only 10 centimetres away. Oh, this is even worse. There's loads of furry stuff in here. Oh, that is disgusting. Let's have a look at mine. Oh, there's a huge bacterial splat in the middle of the plate. I must have coughed off a lot of saliva with that one. So this is like coughing into someone's face when they're right next to you. And that's bad news for them when you realise that the average cough has 20,000 viruses in it. Which brings me to our last result. Let's have a look at the plate where I covered my mouth and coughed at Chris. Oh, two bacteria! I knew you hadn't covered your mouth properly. I think you can see, though, that this is a lot better than the other ones we did. So, 
there you have it. In case you were in any doubt about whether or not to cover your mouth when you cough, we've shown that not only could your cough reach the person right next to you, but it could travel a lot further than that. Yuck. And as well as seeing how far they travel, we've shown you just how much bacteria there can be in coughs. Well, there's a lot more in yours than in mine, Chris. You should see a doctor. Maybe I should. Better go find one. <laughs> And now to our lab, Whoa. where we do incredible experiments. Oh, looks disgusting. To show you how your body works. So watch this. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Ah. Your mouth and throat are awesome. And we're going to show you one of the cleverest tricks your body does every time you eat. Swallowing. And if you're thinking, what's the big deal with swallowing? Well, here's the thing. Your lungs and stomach actually share part of the same tube. Your mouth and throat go into one tube that then splits so that you can eat and breathe through the same hole. Now you might be thinking, because everything goes in through the throat, this could get pretty disastrous with all your food ending up in your lungs, right? Wrong. He's right. Never fear. You actually have a super-duper clever bit of body kit that stops this happening. It's called the epiglottis, and to show you how it works, I'm going to put a camera up Chris's nose and down into his throat. This is a transnasal esophagoscopic camera. That's a bit of a mouthful, but what it means is it can go up through your nose and down into your esophagus, which is the tube that carries food to your tummy. Now, even if you do have a transnasal esophagoscopic camera lying around at home, you still shouldn't try this yourself. We are responsible doctors, and only people like us can use transnasal esophagoscopic cameras. You like saying that, don't you? Yes. OK, are you ready? OK, so we've just gone into Chris's nose. You can see a few hairs there, a few bogeys. You might want to save those for tea later. I can actually see the camera at the back of Chris's throat. It's like a cave in there. This here is actually the dangly bit at the back of your throat. It's called the uvula. Now we're going further in. So this here, that's his tongue. And just behind that is a pink flap, the epiglottis, that folds over when we swallow. Hello, Chris's epiglottis. You're right down there. Still doing a good job. Now, at the moment, it's open because he's breathing letting air into his lungs. The minute he swallows, it'll really quickly close to prevent any food or liquid going into his lungs and divert it all down into his tummy. You'll be able to see it much better if he has some soup. You ready for some soup, Chris? Yeah. Right. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Is this carrot and coriander? Yes. Yeah, your favourite? You know I hate that. What? what Here we go. Saying? Yum, yum, yum. So you can actually see the spoon with the soup in it going into his mouth. We're putting the soup in. And now, watch the epiglottis when he swallows. There, you see it moves really quickly, closes off his lungs completely, so that all the soup goes down into his tummy. Let's see that again. There's the windpipe. Here comes the soup. There, the epiglottis closes. The soup goes down. Yum. The epiglottis opens. Job done. You actually swallow about 600 times a day. Sometimes when you're eating, and sometimes when you're just swallowing your own saliva. So we've shown you how your epiglottis stops you getting lungs full of food and spit. But what if you were upside down? Well, there's another body part that stops your food going up when you're upside down. You mean down? No, up. From the tip of your tongue to the end of your bum, you've got a long tube lined with smooth muscle that squeezes food through your body, a bit like squeezing toothpaste out of a tube. It even works when you're upside down, and we're going to prove it. Zandi won't mind being upside down as long as I feed him. OK, Zand, here's some soup. Ooh, lovely. Mm. Carrot and coriander, my favourite. Now, it's not a good idea to always eat soup like this. Imagine what restaurants would look like if we did. Now, what's happening now is that the smooth muscle in my esophagus <laughs> is pushing the soup up towards my stomach. This is called peristalsis. Waves of muscle contraction all the way through my gut push food through my digestive system. So swallowing works even when you're upside down. But let's face it, it's not a good idea. You're going to end up with soup in your hair. Chris? Chris? Chris?
Did you know the average person swallows every 36 seconds? Mm -hmm. That's over 70,000 times a day. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness you do, otherwise you could choke on your own saliva. Ugh. As doctors, we're big believers in healthy living, and that includes healthy eating, doesn't it, Zand? Zand! Yes, sir. Now, preparing your own food is so much better than ready-made meals, but it can also be full of potential danger. Can it? Yes. For example, that burger could have given you an upset stomach. And you've got to be really careful chopping your own vegetables. Well, Chris, I'm playing it safe. Not chopping anything at all. Uh oh, Zan's choking. Looks like an injury alert. So, what should you do if you see someone choking? A. Act quickly by hitting them on the back up to five times. B. Ask them politely to speak more clearly. Or C. Send a small and expertly trained mouse into their mouth and get it to push the blockage from the other side. Melissa, what do you think it is? Which option? Option A, because I think it will help if you pat them on the back, because it will help the food to come out from your mouth. Melissa is totally right. Have a look at this. So, Zan, turn around, bend over, and I'm going to hit him with the heel of my hand hard between his shoulder blades. So we're going to give him up to five hard blows, OK? Has it worked? <coughs> now, in real life, I'd be doing that much harder to Zand. Right, now it's your turn. Everyone have a go. And remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but choking can be very serious, so it's always best to find an adult. Where do I hit? OK, so that's where you want to hit him. So right between the shoulder blades. Oh. Yeah, so you can hear him breathing now. He stood up. <laughs> Is it out yet? <laughs> so hit, then check. I'm fine, yes. But don't hit your little brother if he's not choking. So, remember, if you see someone choking, hit them on the back up to five times. Also remember, carrots can be a lot more dangerous than you think. And that's why I'm sticking to something a lot safer, like this yoghurt. <laughs> <laughs>